Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about loss. It could be loss of a loved one. It could be loss of a relationship, a divorce, loss of a job. With the pandemic going on, people are experiencing a lot of grief and a lot of loss. It could be the loss of a lifestyle, loss of, of things you know, that you were accustomed to. But loss is something that is inevitable. It's inevitable in life. We're all gonna experience loss. But how do, we, how do we handle it? And how does it affect us? And it affects everyone in different ways. There's no magic formula for dealing with loss. And people experience grief. There's not one person that experiences grief exactly the same way as another person. So I want to talk about the different stages of grief originally defined by Kubler-Ross. The first stage is denial and isolation. So at first we, we want to deny the loss ever happened. We'd rather just forget about it. We'd rather just not even accept it, acknowledge it, but just block it out and isolate ourselves from the pain. The second is anger. A lot of people get angry when there's a loss. Maybe they're angry at the person that they've lost. Maybe they're angry at the circumstance or someone else related to the loss. Maybe they're angry at themselves. But anger is a common emotion tied with loss. The third phase or stage is bargaining. And sometimes we, we bargain with God, we bargain with uh, circumstances or people to try to change the outcome. And sometimes there's guilt tied in with bargaining because maybe in our mind we think, how could we have prevented this from happening, this loss? And even though intellectually we know we couldn't, there was nothing we could do to change the outcome. Guilt can often be a, an emotion that people go through when they're dealing with loss. The next stage is depression. And sometimes depression is caused by the loss specifically. Or sometimes the person maybe has struggled with depression prior to this loss and the loss has pushed them over into depression. Sometimes it's clinical depression and sometimes it's situational depression. Depending on how much those circumstances impact the individual's life and for how long it lasts. But like I said, there's no magic formula to grief. And, and for some people, grief lasts weeks, some people it lasts months, and some people it might be a year or two before they're, they're over the grief. And, and a lot of people don't realize that loss, depending on what the loss is, it may be something that you're never fully over, but you manage the emotions tied to the loss and, and you let go of, of some of the pain. And sometimes that process goes through ups and downs, kind of like a roller coaster. And the emotions can come upon you like a wave. And all of a sudden it might be a song or a memory or a place or a location or maybe an anniversary date that reminds you of that person or that situation. And there's a flood of emotions. And I often encourage people, let the emotions flow through you. Sit with the emotions. Acknowledge the pain. Rather than trying to put it in a box, put it up on a shelf and compartmentalize it. A lot of people are not comfortable with emotional pain. Now I know that when I was a 13 year old and my mom passed away, I had no idea that there were stages to grieving. I had no idea the impact of that loss. 
until years later, and it impacted me in a significant way. So depression is, is the fourth stage of grieving, and, and the final stage is acceptance. To be able to fully accept the loss and let go of sometimes the person, but sometimes it really is about letting go of the pain that may have consumed you for weeks and months on end. But loss is difficult, no matter what the loss is or who the loss is related to. It's difficult. And I wanna talk for a minute about coping with loss. How do you cope with it? How do you deal with it? Again, like I said earlier, a lot of people don't deal with it, or what they do is they, they deal with it by distracting themselves, by getting busy with something else because they don't want to deal with the pain. Some people revert to self-destructive behaviors, alcohol, drugs. Sometimes they get involved in other relationships or spending money or food, but they, they sometimes self-destruct because they don't want to acknowledge the pain. Sometimes they self-destruct because they're punishing themselves. Some people have survivor guilt where they don't know why they're still alive and someone else isn't. And they feel guilty for being alive. And I often ask, what would that person want for you, for your life? Would they want you to suffer indefinitely? Would they want you to, to hang on to the pain over an extended period of time? And of course the answer is no. No, they want you to heal. They would want you to let go of the pain so that you can keep on living and live a life that has joy. But if you're gonna deny the pain, if you're gonna suppress the pain, then you're not gonna fully experience the joy. So one thing that I often encourage people to do is when they're coping with loss and grief is to reach out to others that are close to them, to be able to talk about their pain. Not put it in a box, but to talk openly about it. Allow themselves to be vulnerable because you have to go through it to get through it. And often suffering and healing occur simultaneously. The second thing is to be sure to work on your self-care, whether that be your eating habits, your sleeping habits, that might be exercising, but doing things to take care of yourself. The third thing is lean into your faith and rely on your relationship with God as you're going through this suffering and this pain. Sometimes it helps for people to write and to journal. I often encourage people to write letters because I find that very helpful and very powerful. Maybe writing a letter to someone and saying goodbye because maybe you never had that chance. And then to read it to someone that's close to you. Maybe the letter needs to be written to you because you need to forgive yourself, because you, you blame yourself for this loss. And that sometimes is also another way to deal with loss. But loss is something that is inevitable. It is part of life and it is painful. But relying on your support, reaching out to others, leaning on your faith, spending time writing, taking care of yourself, doing these things. And if that doesn't seem to be enough, then maybe you need to get involved in a support group. Maybe you need to find a grief support group. Or maybe, maybe you need to go to counseling. And maybe you need to talk to someone who is objective and can help you work through this process. But pain is tough. And so many of us would rather 
not deal with it. But I encourage you, if you've been through loss as a result of the pandemic or as a result of anything, deal with it so that you can work through it and so that you can experience the fullness of life, the fullness of joy and happiness. Until next time, Dr. Tony Ferretti.